Welcome to the Fantasy Football Forge Week 9 Tight End Rankings. If I don't cover any tight ends that you are interested in in this video, you can always ask questions in the comments about any of my rankings, about any player that I did not cover. You can also find my complete rankings up on the website www.theffforge.com where they will get updated throughout the rest of the week. And as a reminder, you can come visit me live uh, about a half hour, 45 minutes prior to kickoff for the Germany game in the early morning hours. And then you can also come and visit me again if you'd like, of course, for start sit questions or any other questions that you have or just to hang out for a little bit pregame. Um, one and a half hours prior to the main slate of games, I will also be available. And before we get into the rankings, let's recap how I did last week with some DFS buys that I gave you, as well as my love them and my fade them. And you will get my DFS buys for week nine at the end of this video. Starting off with someone who I thought was a good buy. I said Darren Waller at $5,200. Uh, I said not necessarily a steal of a deal for him, but he ended up getting injured. So that does not count. It, I also mentioned that it might be worth spending up uh, spending 8k for Travis Kelsey last week and that did not work out then in the discount bin I had Logan Thomas at 3400 he finished as the tight end seven so that worked out well and for a contrarian play I said Dalton Schultz at $3,900 and that was a big fat fail then for my love him, I said uh, Kyle Pitts was my love him. He ended up as the tight end at 19. I will say at least I got the logic correct on which tight end might perform better in that game. John U. Smith had a terrible game. I pretty much faded him, and that did not work out. But he was not my official fade. My official fade was Cole Komet, and I said that I thought it was a trap game, but I could not rank him any lower than I did because there was a lot of upside in that matchup. And unfortunately for my fade, it did not end up being a trap game. He did take advantage of the upside that I had mentioned, and he finished as the tight end eight on the week in half PPR scoring. Let's get on to the week nine rankings. As always, you are now seeing on the screen my first tier of tight ends, uh, smaller tier usually here, especially for tight ends, though the tight end room is getting quite deep at this point in the season, so that's great. We have quite a few good tight ends on by this week, and we're still quite loaded at the tight end position, so it's going to be interesting once all the tight ends are available uh, might not be the position where, for the most part, you can get, uh, if you're holding on to the Mark Andrews, Dallas Goddard's, TJ Hawkinson's down the stretch of the world, you might not be getting that advantage that you had hopefully drafted, um, especially in some of these important games. So that's not a great sign going forward for people who invested in those players. But this is my first tier this week. At tight end number one, I have Travis Kelsey, followed by Mark Andrews, Dallas Goddard, TJ Hawkinson, and Dalton Kincaid. And... Every inch of me wants to put Dalton Kincaid higher than TJ Hawkinson. I will probably end up doing that. I am planning on changing the format for my video this upcoming weekend uh, for my Saturday videos. Usually I've done an injury report. I'm planning on changing that format a little bit more to a um, an updated the rankings type of video. So I'll try to figure out how to do that. might be a little bit rough on my first go this weekend. But just a heads up on that change. And I also forgot to move this graph uh, or whatever, this information a little bit over to the left there. So I'm sorry about any confusion there. This is the ranking. This is just the Excel, you know. That's going to bring us into the second tier of tight ends where we'll start to talk about them a little bit more. And this tier is very close behind the first tier, but not quite into that must start tier and to kick this tier off at tight end to six we have logan thomas he has been a top six tight end on the season via my ev rankings and it's not a good matchup this week unfortunately per se against new england but i think you gotta trust him if you got him he has been quite good on the season moving on to my tight end number seven we have kyle pitts and it's an okay matchup going up against minnesota I think you just have to hope for the best with him. I think that both of these teams will try to and will fail at running the ball against one another, forcing them to turn to their passing attacks, in which case hopefully Kyle Pitts can uh, take advantage of 
that matchup. Then Jake Ferguson in at tight end number eight, and it is a solid matchup for him going up against Philadelphia. The floor for him is concerning, as you can see right here, the, the lower end of the expected range also quite low compared to a lot of the guys that he is surrounded by. But it is the type of matchup that could produce a big day, and Vegas would back that up with the fact that they opened up this game as the second highest over-under. And at tight end number nine, we have Trey McBride, the uh, hot wire, hot waiver wire ad this past week. And he is in the single worst matchup, unfortunately, for tight ends this week going up against Cleveland. And that's by a ways. Like, it's not even really close. Uh, on average, tight ends get one and a half fewer targets than any other team. They get one fewer receptions than any other team. And they have the fewest yards per game. Uh, 19 on average for tight ends against this Cleveland defense, which is almost half as much as the next worst matchup for yards per game. And it, you only have to go about five tight ends deep before it is half as much, or five defenses deep before it's half as much. So really a terrible matchup here. He's going to have a new quarterback throwing to him, probably a rookie quarterback throwing to him, which might be good for full PPR purposes and almost certainly will be bad for standard purposes purposes so I, I my lens is half PPR and for Trey McBride he is a fade for me this week I would you're probably playing him if you got him because you probably didn't have a Jake Ferguson on your roster if you went and got him but you know maybe you do have a Kyle Pitts and Logan Thomas I think I would just take the shot on them in all formats except for full PPR Logan Thomas full PPR would uh, Kyle Pitts would not Kyle Pitts though standard format half PPR I would I think I said that correctly. Let's move on to Cole Komet and at tight end number 10. And it's not a good matchup for him going up against New Orleans. And we saw how that worked out two weeks ago. Last week was a very good tight end matchup. And they took advantage of that with Cole Komet. There is reason for concern. But he very well may get heavily targeted again. There's a lot of reasons to think that that could be the case. So I think, you know, you trust it and hope for the best with Cole Komet. That's going to bring us to my third tier of tight ends, and these are just the last of the quote-unquote trustworthy tight ends. Quote-unquote, because I don't know how trustworthy they necessarily are. Even some of these guys aren't necessarily trustworthy, but that's how tight ends work. Still, these are the guys who have uh, proven themselves to a certain extent this season. Their projections are good because of that. At tight end number 11, we have Dalton Schultz, and he's hot, then he's cold. He's yes, then he's no, he's in then he's out, he's up, then he's down, Katy Perry. At tight end 12, we have David Njoku going up against the Arizona Cardinals. He's got the eye of the tiger, a fighter, dancing through the fire, because he is a champion, and we're gonna hear him roar, Katy Perry. And also, the Cardinals are a bottom three tight end matchup, hence him not being ranked higher than he is. Definitely a candidate to be moving up ahead of Dalton Schultz there. And at tight end 13, we have Taysom Hill. They say, be afraid. He's not like the others. Futuristic lover, different DNA. We don't understand him. Katy Perry. And that's going to bring us to the fourth and final tier of this video. At tight end 14, we have Johnny Smith. And this is where you can start to think about streaming and taking the guy that you are personally most comfortable with. Uh, because maybe you agree with an argument that you had heard. Uh, you agree with somebody's argument on one player more than somebody else's argument. You get the idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you one quick reason why I would play each next player over the previous player, essentially the one big argument for that player. And once again, we start off with Johnny Smith, so I can't really argue him against anybody yet in this tier, but he has been a top eight tight end on the season so far via my EV rankings. I expected him to struggle last week, so I'm not going to hold that up against him too terribly, and you could do worse at the tight end position. That brings us to my tight end 15 with Gerald Everett going up against the New York Jets, who are one of the five best tight end matchups, and that is why he is a love him this week for me. Hopefully he can be the one that gets a touchdown from uh, Justin Herbert for once. That would help him. Then at tight end 16, we have Hunter Henry going up against Washington, and projections love him, and Kendrick Bourne is out. He was a trusted target of Mac Jones, Kendrick Bourne, that is. 
And Hunter has been, a, I think, a fairly trusted target as well of Mac Jones. So I think that he could be one of the guys to help pick up some of that slack and maybe get a little bit more heavily targeted than we've seen. Then at tight end 17, we have Tyler Higby, and this is just about where he should be ranked based on everything. I really don't have an argument for or against him. This is just really based on literally everything where he should be ranked. Then at tight end 18, we have Tyler Conklin, and it is a good matchup going up against the Chargers. That offers some floor, some ceiling for him, and the matchup gauge also likes it here, as that is in the red, which is good, and blue, like David Njoku's there, is uh, poor, and then these white ones would be kind of like it's a neutral matchup for these players to take advantage of it and, and be good in that week. At tight end 19, we have Luke Musgrave, and it's an even better matchup than Conklin has. It is the fourth best matchup. The Rams are, via the average fantasy points, scored against them from the tight end position, and that has been the the piece of data that I've been saying or quoting as far as how good of a matchup that these uh, players are in. At tight end 20, we have Cade Otten. He's had six targets for two straight games now, and Houston has been a good matchup for tight ends as well. And at tight end 21, we have Donald Parham Jr., and the Jets are one of the five best tight end matchups, as I said. And Herbert loves Parham in the end zone, loves to get him touchdowns, and that's not a new thing. That goes back to three years ago, and he just always liked Donald Parham when they get those two tight end sets out there, especially near the goal line. And at tight end uh, 22, we have Chig Okonkwo. And over the past three weeks, he's averaging over six targets a game. They're starting to get him more involved. And I think there are reasons to suspect that that might continue. And so you could take a chance on him. Then I'm not going to go into the fifth tier, but there is one person that you might be curious about. And that would be Michael Mayer because he was a late cut from my fourth tier. And the ECR on him is really high. I think he is uh, at like ECR 15 currently from Michael Mayer. And, you know, I totally get it. He did have that, that one week, like three weeks ago, where he had six targets. Seriously, though, uh, to give you a good argument for him, I suppose, why he could have another good week. I don't even, that week wasn't even that big of a fantasy week, but Aiden O'Connell and him probably built a rapport in the off season, both being rookies. I'm sure they got a lot of time with each other. Um, both of them were, would have been on the second squad starting units. And so, uh, I think that that would be a good thing. And then of course, rookie quarterbacks often enough, not always rely on their tight ends to a fair extent as safety blankets. So there is reason to think that Michael Mayer could get uh, peppered with targets from O'Connell. And unfortunately, in his first start, we don't really know. Michael Mayer wasn't really involved at that point in time. That's going to bring us on to my DFS buys for week nine. And uh, for a good buy, I said Dalton Kincaid at $3,700 felt uh, real good to me. That is a steal of a deal. And in the discount bin, I said to give me Kate Otten at 3,000 DK bucks. I have a feeling that that game could pop off for more than 60 combined points between the two of them. People seem to be fairly torn on this game between Tampa Bay and Houston and whether it's going to be uh, a yucky low-scoring game or a high-scoring game. And I tend to go on the side, obviously, where I think it will be a high-scoring game. And for my contrarian play for the tight end position, I'm going to give you a Jake Ferguson at 4,000 DK bucks. People will be flying to Dalton like flies to poop. He's only cost 300 bucks less than Jake Ferguson, and I think pretty much everybody in the world has him ranked ahead of Jake Ferguson. You'll have him right where you want him, your opponents in DFS, when Kincaid lays a stinker out there and Jake is Fergalicious. That is it for my tight end rankings for week nine. Thank you very much for stopping on through. Please like, comment, subscribe, ask any questions that you have in the comments. Come visit me live prior to kickoff or any of the games this weekend. And uh, good luck with your fantasy teams. Bye-bye.